Okay. Let's, let's take this logic and make it a bit more complicated. Uh, there are some weird angling here, which I don't quite like. What I'll do is I'll make a new curve somewhere in the middle, divide that curve, and then project those points onto the outside curves. Let's make them a bit more wavy. Good. Okay. So, in fact, I'll make the whole thing again from scratch, but this time with three curves. Draw one roughly in the middle. We will import this curve and divide it as before. So, again, we will use the divide curve component, which, by the way, you can find in curve division panel. So in division, there's ways to divide curve by contours. You can create dash patterns. You can divide a curve into equal length segments. You can divide a curve uh, by controlling the distance along the curve or the distance in space. And there's a bunch of other components which are a bit more, more uh, expert user than this one. So divide curve is the one we use. Select one curve, namely this one. And I will right away use a slider to control the, the, the number n here. Uh, you can make a slider by dragging it from the tabs onto the canvas. Or you can type slider in here. And there's number slider. But there's even an, uh, a way to, do, to create a slider with preset values, which is sort of, sort of nice to have. You can type 1 equals less than 10 equals less than 100. This means that it has a minimum of 1, a maximum of 100, and a default value of 10. So now it goes from 1 to 100, and it was set at 10. OK. So what I want to do here is take all these points and project them from this location onto those two curves. And this projection has to be as short as possible. So it'll find the point on this curve, which is closest to this point. Then we will create a new line from these two, from between these two points and see how it works. Right? So there's a same here. We'll project this one onto those two curves, giving us two new points. And we'll make a line between those two points. There is more than, than, than one way to actually do this. Uh, the, the easiest way is to use the pool point component. I think Rhino also has a pool command, which allows you to pool points onto geometry. So it works in, in almost exactly the same, the same way. Uh, pool point takes one point, and it pulls it to the nearest object in a list. So in this case, we will take this point and put it onto this geometry, which is currently not yet set. So we'll go in here, set one geometry. It can be a curve, it can be a surface, or a mesh, or another point, doesn't matter. And now we're actually projecting all of these points onto that curve. And I can repeat this, op this operation for the other curve as well. Good. So now we have uh, this projection, that projection, this one all the way here. And on, and on this side, it went the same way. We, we went from this point to those curves. As you'll see, there's, there's big holes here, because the points actually project not to, to this, because it's far away, but it, it, it projects to those points, which are which are nearby. If I change the shape of this curve, those points will start to converge in the middle. So it, it depends very strongly on the shape of this curve and the location of those points, where these points end up. OK, we now have, for both sets of projections, the location, namely those points, and the distance between the projection. So the distance between this point 
and this point. We can, we can once again use a line component to connect the points, and now we have the green lines as a result. Okay. We can make this a bit more complicated. Instead of creating lines between these two points, we could also take this point, this point, and the original point into account and actually create arc segments. Right, we, could, we could choose to actually make an arc from this point through this point to here and there and there and there. As with lines, uh, if you create an arc in Rhino, you have multiple options. You can, by default, it says uh, center of arc, and then it picks the extents. But you can also choose to define your start point, then your direction, and an end point. Or you can choose to have a start point, an end point, and a midpoint. And we will be using this last option. Uh, where the start point is this set here, the end point is that point here, and the midpoint is the point here. So let's have a look at our arc components. Uh, they too are in curve primitive. So there's lines, circles, arcs, and polygons and rectangles in this one. If you want NURBS curves or, uh, or catenaries or blend curves, you will go not in primitive, but in spline, so that they're all freeform curves in here. So we have, uh, we have six components that actually make, that seem to make arcs. We have an arc that takes a plane, a radius, and an angle domain. That's quite complicated. There's an arc from three points. That's the one we want. There's an arc SED, which stands for start, end, and direction. There is a by arc component, which allows us to create two arcs which are tangent in the middle. And we can control both the start direction and the end direction. This does not exist in Rhino as a command. And we can create arcs that are tangent to circles. But uh, we'll just use the one that's uh, arc three point, arc three PT. It takes three inputs, the start point, the interior point and the end point, and the output is an actual arc, uh, the plane in which the arc lies, and the radius of this arc. These are basically here just because there was still room in this component, because there were three inputs. I could have just uh, given you the arc, and then you can use other components to measure the plane or the radius. But uh, oftentimes, there's a bunch of outputs which you might not need but which are there just for your perusal. So the start point is the same as the, as the line start point. The end point is the same as the line end point. But the interior point was the original division. Let us delete the lines and show only the arcs. As I change this, you can see that these arcs sort of, I mean, some are very curved, some are very straight, some are actually self-intersecting, or rather not self, but they, they uh, intersect other, other arcs. And if we make these curves a bit less extreme, that'll happen less often. So we can actually play around with this and see if we can get it to be a little more, bit more to our liking. and still play with the, the division count. Now, of course, you could do this in Rhino. I mean, we, we haven't, we're, we're not doing anything that you couldn't also do in Rhino, but it would be very, very annoying to find which number you like best, because it takes a good two minutes to actually do this by hand. And it only takes a quarter second to do it in here. <laughs> 